Hi, in this video we'll be learning how to make a table component in React. This component will have the functionalities for editing, adding and deleting rows. So if we take a look, we see we have multiple columns over here. We also have a label component and we have two buttons over here for deleting and editing the row. If we click on the edit button over here, we see a modal gets opened up which allows us to edit the different fields in the row. We can also edit the drop down and save it and the fields get updated. Um, if we click on this delete button over here, we see it deletes the row. And also if we open the modal and we enter some details and we click on submit, we see a new row gets added. Another thing to note is that if we open the modal and we try to submit the modal without entering anything, we also have form validation which changes based on which input fields are validated or not. So this is a great uh, component to make if you're a beginner to React. Um, we'll be going over the basics of how to create the app from scratch, the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And we'll also be taking a look at state management and props. So without much further ado, let's get started. So to get started, you'll need to open up your IDE. Over here, I have a basic uh, React app created using Create React App or Vite. Um, so before we get started, we'll need to install another dependency for icons. So we'll open the terminal here and write down npm install react dash icons and install that. While we do that, we can also open up index.css and add some styling for every element in our website. So we'll target everything using the asterisk and we'll say the box sizing should be border box. The default margin should be zero pixels. The default padding for every element should be zero pixels as well. And the font family should be area by default if that's not available then helvetica otherwise sans serif as the backup and we'll go ahead and save that and now react icons has been installed so we can start up our app by writing down npm run dev and we can see that it's being run at localhost so if we refresh localhost 5173 and refresh we see we have hello world printed out over here so now that we have our app set up we can start with the component so the first thing we'll make is the table component. So we'll come into our IDE over here and inside the SRC folder, we'll create a new folder for the components and we'll call it components. Inside that, the first file we'll make is table.jsx. And we can also make the corresponding table.css for that. Now we'll open up table.jsx and I have an extension which lets me write down RAFC and it automatically creates the boilerplate arrow function for the functional component. Let's import the CSS as well. So we write down import dot slash table dot CSS. Then we'll go into app dot JSX and remove this hello world and include our table component. So we'll just write down table and it will be auto imported by VS code. If we close this and save, we see that the table component is rendered out on the right hand side. So next we actually want to write down the HTML for the table that will be generated. So inside the div, we want to have a table um, HTML tag. Inside that, the first thing will be the T head tag and below that will be the T body. Inside the T head, we want to add a TR tag, which will be the header row. We'll have a TH cell, which will be the page header. Another TH cell, which will be the description header another th which will be the status header and another th for the actions such as delete and edit. Now we'll go into the t body and we'll create a new row. This will be our first row of actual data. So we'll create a td for the data. The first page will be called home, so td home. The second TD will contain the description. So we'll just write down this is the main page. The next TD will contain the label. Since it's a label component, we'll make it a span. And inside the span, we'll just write down live. And the last TD will contain the two icons that we have. So we'll create the TD. Now we have to create the icons over here. So we'll create the opening bracket. We'll write down span 
our icons will be contained inside this span. So the first icon will be the BS fill trash fill icon. And the second one will be the BS fill pencil fill icon. Now we have to import these from the React icons library. So let's go to the top over here and write down import curly braces, BS fill trash fill and BS fill pencil fill. And we'll go ahead and import that from react dash icons slash BS and save that. And now we can see on the right hand side, the initial table has been rendered. Now let's just add another row so that the table looks a bit more full. We just change this a bit, the data inside. So we'll name this page two and just say this is the second page and make the status draft. And we'll go ahead and save that and we see it's rendered out. So the next thing we want to do is add some styling to our component over here. But before we do that, we want the table to be centered on the page. So we'll go into app.css and target the app div, which is the main div, the one with the class name dot app. So we'll write down dot app and we'll just say display flex we'll set the flex direction to column. We'll align items to center. And we'll also justify content to center. And then we want to change the background color and the height. So we'll set the height to 100% of the viewport height. And we'll set the background color to hash F A F nine F six. And we'll go ahead and save that and we see that it's centered and the background is slightly off white. So now that we're done with that, we can actually add the styling to our table component. So let's just close all these uh, windows over here, these tabs. Now, before we write down the CSS, we actually have to add the class names to our different uh, HTML elements inside our component. So for the table, above that we have the div, we'll write down a class name of table dash wrapper for that. For the actual table itself, we'll add a class name of table. Next, we want to add a class name for the description field because because the description field, it will contain text inside the rows, which can be pretty large. And we want it to expand to as much space as available. So only for the description header, we'll add a class name of expand since the other ones can uh, be minimal size, but the description uh, column needs to be as big as possible. Now for the label um, span, we'll just give it a class name of label. And as well as label dash life, because each label will have a different color. So for the draft uh, span, we'll give it a class name of label, as well as label dash draft. And for the sake of completeness, let's add another row and give it a class name of label dash error, just so we can see what it looks like. So we'll name this page three and third page and just give it a class name of label and label dash error. Next up is the span which contains our icons. So we'll give it a class name of actions. And then we'll just uh, copy this over and paste it into our other rows as well. And we'll go ahead and save that. Of course, there aren't any changes yet because we have to edit the CSS as well. So now we'll go into table.cs and add the styling. So the first thing we target is dot table dash wrapper. And the only thing we want here is we want it to have a width of 100% of its parent. Next, we'll target the dot table. We want it to have a display block. We want the overflow to be hidden. We want the table layout to be fixed. We want the border collapse to be collapse. We want the box shadow to be zero pixels horizontal at 10 pixels vertically and with a blur of 10 pixels and a color of hash CCC. Next, we want the border radius to be equal to 10 pixels. 
and we want the white space to be no wrap for our table. We want the width to be 100 EM, but we also want to set a max width. So we'd say max width should be 80% of the parent. This makes our table responsive based on the width of the page. We want the margin to be auto, so it's centered horizontally on the page. And instead of having a table layout of fixed, we actually want it to be table auto. But first we'll set overflow X to be equal to auto so that whenever the width is too small, the table can scroll horizontally. So we'll go to the top here and we'll set table layout to auto instead. We'll go ahead and save that. And then now you'll see that the table doesn't take the full width. So we'll fix that later. But for dot table T head, we want the background color to be hash CCC. And we also want the color of the text inside it to be hash 222. We save that and we see that the header looks slightly different from the other rows. Next, we'll target dot table and we'll target the T TH tags inside that and dot table TD as well. And for those, we just want them to have a padding of 0 0.8 rems. And we'll see everything is a bit more spaced out now. For the dot table TD specifically, we want it to have a border top of 0 0.5 pixels solid and a color of hash DDD. We want the overflow to be hidden and we want the text overflow to be ellipsis. Next, we want to target the T, uh, the dot table T body TR whenever we hover over a TR. So we'll say background color should be hash E, 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 whenever we hover over a row. And now we see we can hover over a row and we get to know that we're hovering over it. Um, so now what we want to do is that we want the description column to expand to the largest uh, width that it can possibly. So if we remember, we gave it a dot expand class. So we'll target that and we'll just give it a width of 100%. And now we see that it fills out the entire width of the table. Next, what we want to do is to target the labels that we had made, so dot label, we'll give it some styling. We'll give it a border radius of three pixels. We'll give it a padding of 0 0.3 rem. We'll give it a color of white. And if we save that, we can't see anything and that this is where the different types of labels come in. So we'll target dot label dash draft first. And we want to give it a background color of hash 777 and it's and it pops up now so and for label dash live we want to give it a background dash color of green so for that we'll say hash 42A942 and if we save that we see it on the right hand side now and then for dot label dash error we want it to have a red background color so for background dash color we'll give it a value of hash D nine five three four F and we save that and we see we have the three different labels rendered out on our table. Next thing we want to target the actions. So for dot actions, we just wanted to have a display flex. And we want the justify content to be space around. And then we also want to target the SVG inside it, so dot actions SVG. And we just want the cursor to be a pointer whenever we hover over the icons. And then lastly, we want to have the trash icon be colored red. So for dot delete dash BTN, we'll just give it a color of hash E1D, E10D05. And if we save that, we don't see it come up because we didn't add the class name to the icons. So we'll just give the trash icon a class name of delete dash btn. And if we save that, we see it turn red on the right hand side. Let's do this for the other trash icons as well. And now we have the table looking as it should in our final product. 
So now that we have the table prepared, we actually want to create the model that pops up whenever you want to add a new row or if you want to edit a row. So we'll go into the components folder and we'll write down model.jsx and we'll also create model.css. Again, we'll create the functional component using RAFC and then we'll import the CSS, import.slash model.css and then we'll save that and import it into app.jsx below the table. And we see that the model is rendered out below the table. Now we want this to be actually on top of the table in front of everything else. So we need to add some styling for that initially. So we'll go into model.jsx and create um, the initial divs that we want. So we'll delete the text for the model over here. And inside the main div, we'll add another div. And just include some text inside it. So let's add some initial class names and styling to make it appear where it should. So the outside div is just a wrapper, which will be the entire width and height of the page. It'll just be a background for the model. So we'll name it model dash container in the class name. And then the inner div will have a class name of model, which will be the actual model, which contains the form. So let's close everything here and then go into model.css and then add some styling. So for the model dash container, we'll give it a styling of having a position fixed. And now we can see that the model is on top of the table and in the middle of the page. We'll give it a Z index of one to ensure that it's on top of every other component. We'll give it a left of zero and a top of zero as well. We'll make sure that the width is a hundred percent of its parent and the height is also a hundred percent of its parent. Now you see it goes to the top left. So we'll just give it a display flex. We'll give it a line items of center and we'll justify content to center as well. Now we see that it's at the center again. Next, we want to have it have a background color of grayish. So we'll give it a background dash color RGBA 000. And then for the alpha value, we'll go 0.4. So it's slightly darkened the background. Next, we'll target the model itself. So dot model. We'll want it to have a border radius of five pixels. We want it to have a padding of two rem. The background color should be white. The width should be 25 EM. And now we see that it's rendered out on the right hand side. So now that we're done with the initial styling, we can actually start creating the form that will be inside our model. So we'll delete this text and create a form HTML element. Now we want multiple fields inside this and each will, each will be a different form group. So we'll create a div for that. Inside the div, we'll have the first thing be the label. And we'll give it an attribute of HTML4 and the first input field will be the page. So we'll just name it page. And then we'll add the input field for this. So we'll create an input HTML element. We'll give it a name of page. And this should be a self-closing tag. And if we save that, we see it's rendered out on the model. So we'll create another a similar form group. But for this, it'll be the description. So HTML4 should be a description. And then we'll change the name as well. This should be a text area instead of an input field. And then the label should be description. Now below this, we'll add another form group. This will be a drop down. So firstly, we'll um, edit the label field. So HTML4 should be status and the label should say status as well. Instead of an input, it should be a select field. 
And inside the select field, we'll have multiple options. We'll first name this to status and then add the options inside it. So the first option will have a value of live and live inside the text area as well. The second one will be draft. And the third one will be error. And we can see that we have our three input fields over here, an input area, a text area, and a drop down. Lastly, we also want to have a submit button. So we'll create a button and we'll just make it say submit. And then now that we have that, we just want to give it a type of submit so that whenever enter is pressed on the keyboard, this entire form gets submitted. So now we have all of our input fields and we also have a submit button and a drop down. And when the submit button is clicked, it refreshes the page, which is the view of a bus. So now that we have that, let's add some styling. So for our form groups, we'll just give them a class name of form dash group. So we'll add a class name to each of our divs. Next, we want to add a class name for the submit button. So we'll go to the bottom, we'll give it a class name of BTN. And now we can go into modal.css and add some styling. So we'll begin by targeting the button at the bottom. So we'll write down dot modal and then inside that target the dot btn class and then we want it to have a display of block and we want the margin to be auto so that it gets centered horizontally now this dot btn class will be shared by this button as well as a button that will be below the table which will open up this modal and since it's shared we want the rest of the .btn styling to be inside app.css. So we'll open app.css and write down .btn. We wanted to have a margin top. And we want the margin top value to be one rem. We want the border to be none. We want the background color to be bluish. So hash 1d for e d8 we also want the text color to be white so we'll write down color white or hash fff we want the padding to be 0.5 rem and 1 rem we want the border radius to be 10 pixels and we also want it to have a cursor of pointer whenever we hover over it and we want a box shadow of zero pixels horizontally, but five pixels vertically and five pixels shadow with the color of hash CCC. And now we have the submit button styled as we wanted. So now we can go back to styling the input elements and the form that we have. So we'll target dot form dash group and we'll give it a display of flex the flex direction should be column. We want each form group to, group to have a bottom margin of one rem. So margin bottom one rem. Now inside the form group, we want to target the input as well as the text area and the select HTML elements as well. And for each of those, we want them to have a border of one pixel solid black. We want the border radius to be 0 0.3 rem. The padding should be 0 0.3 rem as well. The font size should be one rem. And we can see that the input and text area and select are styled as they should be. Next, the form group label should have a margin bottom of 0 0.2 rem just to space out the labels and the inputs a bit and that's pretty much it for the styling of our model we see that we have the input area the text area and the drop down as well 
working as they should and styled properly as well and the submit button is also styled so now that we're done with that we can actually begin with the functionality for opening and closing the modal so for that we'll need to go into app.jsx and we want a stateful variable which controls whether the modal is open or not and for that we'll need to import use state from react but before that we'll add a button which can control whether the modal is open or not we'll give it a class name of btn and we'll just make it say add for now of course we can't see it because it's hidden behind the modal so we'll go to the top and we want to import the use state hook from react which will help us create the stateful variable so we'll go above the css import and we'll say import curly bracket use state from react and then before the return statement we'll create a new stateful variable so const modal open and set modal open which will be used to set the value of this variable and then we will say use state and give it an initial value of false now we want to do some conditional rendering of the modal based on the value in this variable so we'll wrap the modal with some curly braces and we'll say if the modal open value is true then render the modal so modal open and 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 then the modal component and now we can see it's not rendered anywhere because the modal open value is false and now we want a function to get run whenever the add button is clicked so it sets modal open to true and the modal gets opened so to do that we'll create a new arrow function inside the on click prop passed to the button so we'll write down on click we'll pass in an anonymous arrow function and we'll say set modal open to true and we'll save that and then now whenever we click on the add button it it opens up the modal now for the functionality of closing the modal whenever we click outside it or we click on the submit button we will need to pass in our set modal open function into our modal and then it will handle the clicks and then call that function as appropriate so uh, we'll go into the modal component over here and then as a prop we'll pass in close modal and we'll set that to an arrow function which will just call set modal open and pass in a value of false so we save that and then the next thing we need to do is to go into modal.jsx and accept the prop so we'll go to the top of the component and we'll add some curly braces and we'll take the close modal prop and now we want it to get run whenever the modal container is clicked which is the outside of everything outside the actual modal itself so we'll say on click just call the close modal function and now if we go into our app and we click outside the modal it works as it should and it closes the modal but it will lead to an error which we'll just see if you click on the input element it also closes the modal and this is because although the outside div is everything outside the modal it's also the parent of everything inside so if anything inside gets clicked um, it's detected as a click on the modal container div as well and this gets called so to fix this we need to firstly convert this into an arrow function and then accept the click event using the e variable which we're taking in and we need to add an if statement and we need to write down if e dot target dot class name is equal to modal dash container then run the close modal function otherwise don't run it so what this basically does is it takes in the click event and it checks the target of that click now javascript is, uh, is smart enough to figure out if the target of the click was the actual modal container div or if it was the input element inside or if it was anything else so it checks the class name of the actual target and if it's equal to the modal container it detects it as an outside click of the modal and it closes it but if it's anything else like the form or the form group or anything else 
it recognizes that it's not the actual modal container being clicked and it doesn't run the close modal function. So now we can reuse the inputs as we did before and it works properly. Um, but if we submit or if we click outside the modal, it closes it. Now we have all our um, rows inside our table.jsx, but we'll see that they are hard coded um, in the HTML itself. We actually want to store them inside a variable and render, render it out based on the variable as it changes. So for that, we need to go into app.jsx and we'll create a new variable. So we'll write down const rows and we'll create an array initially. It'll have objects. The objects will have a field called page, which will be a string, a field called description, which will also be a string and a field called status, again, a string. We'll give this some initial value. So we'll, for the page, we'll name it page one. For description, we'll just write down, this is the first page. And for status, we'll make it live. And then we'll just copy this a few times. So for the second one, we'll name it page two. This is the second page and make the status draft. And then for the last one, page three, this is the third page and the status will be error. So now that we have the variable, we can pass it into the table component so that we can render it out. So we'll name the prop uh, rows and we'll pass in the rows variable that we just created. Then we'll go into the table component and we'll accept the prop in our props list at the top. So we'll create the curly braces and we'll write down rows. Now inside the T body, we want to add some logic for mapping the variable to HTML. So inside the T body, we will create some curly braces since we're adding JavaScript. And we basically want to map through our rows list and for each object render out a different row. So we'll just write down rows.map. And at each index, we'll take in the current row and the index which we're at. And then using the arrow function, we'll return a new tr. And we'll give it a key of IDX. So the first TD will contain row dot page. The second TD will contain row dot description. And we also wanted to have a class name of expand. Next, we want to have a TD with the labels. So we'll just copy this over here. Um, the Instead of having it hard coded to live, we'll have row.status. And instead of having a normal string, we want the label dash live to be actually based on the status. So we'll remove this uh, string and use string interpolation instead. So to do that, we need to wrap this in curly braces since we're adding some JavaScript. we exchange the uh, the quotes for backticks and then instead of writing label dash live we write down label dash dollar symbol curly braces and row dot status now this should do string interpolation on its own and create the appropriate class name based on the status and then lastly we want to add another td for the actions it's pretty easy we just paste it at the bottom over here and now we see that each row is rendered properly as it should be. So we can delete the hard coded rows which we had from before. And then one thing you'll notice is that the labels don't have the first letter capitalized. So we can add some logic for that. So before we're returning a new row, we can just have a temporary variable. So const status text. 
is equal to then we'll take the row dot status and the first character and we'll use dot to uppercase to convert it to uppercase and to this we'll add the rest of the string so we'll do row dot status dot slice one to get the remaining part of the string um, and then if we refresh of course it won't show up because we haven't used the status text variable so instead of using row dot status inside the span we'll use status text and if we save it now we see that um, the first letter is capitalized and now the table looked as it did before but instead of using our coded variables we're using data so the first functionality we can add is deleting the rows when we click on these trash icons so inside app.jsx we can create a new function before we do that we need to make this rows variable a stateful variable by using useState since we want it to be changeable based on the functions we run we'll set the initial value to the array we just made this is for demo purposes of course you can make this empty when you're making your actual app we'll create a new function called const handle delete row this will take the target index which we want to delete and inside it all we want to do is call the set rows um, function and for the set rows we want to basically take the rows array and filter through it as we iterate through the array we don't care about the actual data so we'll just use underscore we'll take in the index and we have to add in a condition here and if the condition resolves to true then the row gets added into our new rows array if it's false it doesn't get added so we basically want to check if the current index is not equal to target index so if it's not equal to the index we want to delete it will just get added to the new row but if it is equal to the index we want to delete it will not get added and essentially it will be deleted so this is the logic for deleting a particular uh, row at an index now we want to pass it in into the table itself so it can get called when we click on the trash icon so we'll go to our table component and create a new prop called delete row and we'll just pass in the handle delete row function over here next we'll open table.jsx to actually accept this prop and use it so we'll go to our prop list and after rows we'll take in the delete row function and all we want to do is go to the trash icon and add in an on click prop and then inside that we want to make an arrow function and just call the delete row prop with the idx and we're getting this idx because um, we're actually uh, going through the array the rows array which is coming through the props and we're taking in the index as we go through it in this map function so if we go ahead and save and we click on the trash icons now they actually delete the rows which when we click on them so now that we have the functionality for deleting the rows we can begin adding code for adding a new row once you click on the add button and make changes to the model because currently if you make changes and you click on submit nothing gets added um, so the first thing we want to do is actually track what the input fields contain because we have no way of knowing what the user is entering right now so what we want to do is we want to use the use state hook again so we'll import it from react by adding the curly braces and writing down use state then we'll go uh, before the return statement and create a form state stateful variable and the set form state function and this will be use state and it'll have an object as the default value the object will contain the first key as page which will be an empty string second key as description which will also be an empty string and then for the status we'll have a default value of live so we want the values inside the input fields to reflect based on the value inside form state so we'll go to the page input and we'll say that the value should be equal to form state dot page and we want something similar like this for every other input as well so for the description 
we want the uh, the value should to, to be equal to form state dot description and for the drop down select over here we want the value to be equal to form state dot status now the last thing we need to do before we can actually use this functionality is we need to make a function which can handle the changes and um, update the form state variable whenever the changes are made so we'll write down const handle change this will take in the change event as e and inside this we want to call the set form state function so we'll call that and then we'll create a dictionary. So we'll take in the existing value from form state. So with this triple dot operator will copy in everything that's currently there. And we only want to uh, update the relevant field which is attached to the input field which is being updated. So we'll use the square bracket since we have a dynamic key. So we'll get the name of the key by using e.target.name and set its value to e.target.value. You'll be wondering why we're doing it this way. We could have a separate function for each input element. We could have a const handle page change, which would keep track of any changes to the page input. And we could do a set form state. Instead of having e.target.name, we could manually set the page equal to the value at the input element. And then we could have another function for handle description change, um, which would update just the description key. And similarly, we could have one for status, but that's bad because you're creating many functions needlessly. And if you have to create a new input, a field, you'll have to create a new function. Um, but having a singular function allows us to just take in the name of the input element that's being changed and updating just that field inside our form state. And we can dynamically get the e.target.name and e.target.value from the change event. So we can just delete the functions we just made and just use a singular handle change function. And we can just pass it in into the input element. So we'll say on change, run the handle change function. And we can basically go ahead and copy this and paste this into the other input fields as well. And now that we can keep track of the form state, we need a separate function which gets run whenever we click on the submit button. So we'll have to create another function for that. We'll call it um, handle submit. So it'll get run whenever the submit button is clicked. So we'll go here and we'll say const handle submit. It'll take in the submit event. And since the submit button refreshes the page whenever we click on it, we want to add e.prevent default so that once we add this, it won't uh, refresh the page anymore since that since that will reset the state and below the prevent default we'll just add console.log form state now we actually need to pass this into the submit button itself so firstly we'll open the console over here so we can see what's printed out and we'll go into the button at the bottom over here and we'll say on click run the handle submit function and if we save that and we open up the model and click on submit we see that an initial um, dictionary is printed out with the default values that we have and if we make changes to the input the text area and the drop down we see that the changes that we made are reflected in what's being printed out so now that we're able to track the changes and we're also able to run something whenever um, the, the submit button is clicked, we actually can work on adding the functionality for adding a new row. So to do that, we'll first need to go into app.jsx and create a new function which handles addition of new rows. So we'll name it const handle submit. It will pass in the new row which has to be added and we'll just say set rows which is the uh, the use state function we have and we'll use the brackets and the triple dot operator to copy in all the existing rows but we'll also add in the new row which we have now we can take in this handle submit function and pass it as a prop to the model 
So below closed model, we'll pass in another prop called also on submit, and we'll pass in the handle submit function. Go back to model, remove the console.log which we have, call the on submit function, and pass in the form state. And of course, uh, we need to take in the on submit in the props list, but before that, we'll also close the model automatically whenever the submit button is clicked. Then we'll take in the on submit through the props. We'll save this. And we'll go back into our app, just refresh it. Click on the add button, add a new page. We'll just write down some, uh, some string, so page four, and this is the fourth page. Make it a draft and submit it. And we can see that the state has been updated, a new row has been added. But there is one issue, if you open the model and you just click on submit without entering anything, a new row gets added, which we don't want. So we need to add some form validation to our model before we uh, run the on submit function. So we'll go into the model.jsx file and we'll create a new function called const validate form. And before we run the on submit prop, we'll add an if statement. So if not validate form, which means the validate form returned a false, just return out of this function and don't run the on submit. So only if the form is validated, then the on submit will get run and the model will get, cl will get closed. So inside validate form, we'll add an if statement. and state that if form state dot page exists and form state dot description exists and form state dot status exists then we want to return true otherwise we want to return false. Now, if we save that and we click on add and we try to submit without entering anything, it won't let us. Even if one field is filled, it won't let us. But if everything is filled, then we can run the submit function. Now, uh, the validation is working, but we want a way of showing the user that some fields need to be entered because there aren't any errors which pop up right now and it might confuse the user. So we'll add um, another div which will contain the errors that are occurring. So to begin with, we want to uh, create a new stateful variable, which will contain um, the errors that are being created. So we'll say const errors and set errors. And we'll say use state and the default value will be an empty string. And then um, as um, in the in the correct flow, we'll just want to set errors to an empty string again. While in the incorrect flow where the validation um, fails, we'll create a temporary variable called error fields, which will be an array. We'll go through each key and value inside our form state. So for const key comma value in of object dot entries form state. We basically want to detect if value the value is falsy, which means it doesn't exist. We want to push it into our error fields array. So we'll push in the key into the error fields array. And then at the end of this, once we're done iterating through all of our keys and values, we want to set errors, the string, and we'll just say error fields dot join. And then we'll join all the error fields inside our array using commas, and that will con convert it into a string. So this essentially takes in all the, all the fields which are causing errors since they're empty and converting it into a string and then saving into our, into our errors um, stateful variable. Now we need to print out this uh, errors stateful variable. So we'll add in some curly braces since we're using some logic and we'll first check if the errors variable exists 
and if it exists we'll create a new div inside that we'll have curly braces again since we're using string interpolation and inside that we'll say please include colon dollar sign curly braces and then we'll just render out the errors stateful variable and we see that it's not working as it should because I believe uh, we weren't um, pushing it into the array, we just called it as a function. So there should be error fields dot push key instead of just error fields key. So we'll just add a dot push over here. Save that. And now if we try to submit without entering anything, we see that the error gets printed out. Now this doesn't exactly look that nice, so we actually want to add some styling to it as well. So we'll add a class name to this div and give it a class name of error. And then we'll go into modal.css and add the styling for this. So at the bottom we'll write down dot error. We wanted to have a background color of hash f8d7d. A. We wanted to have a color of hash D F four seven five nine. We want the padding to be of zero point five rem, and we want the border radius to be of zero point three rem. We want the margin bottom to be of one rem and if you go ahead and save that it looks a lot better and if we try to submit it shows us all the empty fields if we change the description it only shows the page if we change page it only shows the description and it works as it should now so lastly we want to add the functionality for editing the rows once we click on the edit uh, pencil icon on the right hand side so for that we need to go again into app.jsx and firstly we'll need to track which row we're trying to edit. So for that we'll add a stateful variable called, called row to edit and then the function for that will be set row to edit and we'll um, use use state and give it an initial value of null. And then what we want to do is whenever the handle edit row function is called we want to take in the index at which it's being called and we want to set row to edit to be equal to this index and we want to set modal open to true. And now whenever the modal is opened, we can pass in the details of the row which is being edited. So we'll pass in the handle edit row function into the table. So we'll create a new prop called edit row and we'll pass in the handle edit row function. And then this will be called whenever the pencil icon is clicked. So we'll take in the edit row as a prop. And then on the pencil icon, we'll say on click. Call an arrow function. And this should call the edit row with the given index. It will set the row to edit variable and then it will open up the modal. So if we click on it, it opens up the modal. And we see that nothing is rendered out into the input fields, but as a default, we wanted to render out whatever was present at the row which we're editing. So to do that, we'll go back into app.jsx and we want to pass in a new prop called default value. So this will contain default values for the input fields based on the row we're currently editing. So inside default value, we first check if the row to edit is not equal to null. And if it's not equal to null, it means that we're trying to edit a particular row. So for the default value, we'll pass in the value present inside the rows array at the row to edit index. So whenever the edit button is clicked, the row to edit variable is being set to a particular index and then we're passing in a default value into our model. 
So we'll take it in as a prop and then inside the use state, instead of just using this um, empty dictionary, we'll say first try to use the default value that's being passed in and if it's empty or undefined or null, then use the dictionary which we've specified and we can accomplish this using the or statement. So if we save that, we can now see that the values inside the row are being rendered out. Now, if we click on the submit button, um, instead of um, editing the row, it will actually add a new row. So let's just change the value over here. And we see that it's adding a new row instead of editing it. So we actually need to modify the functionality of the submit button so that it can detect whether a row is being edited or a new row is being added. So to do that, we'll need to go back into app.jsx. So we'll open up app.jsx and inside the handle submit function, we'll actually need to use um, a conditional statement. So we'll first need to check if row to edit is equal to null, which means we're adding a new row instead of editing it, we can just use the current functionality. But if we're editing a new row, so in the else statement of this ternary operator, we want to call set rows. We'll call rows.map. We'll take in the current row which we're at while we're iterating as well as the index. And we'll check if the index that we're currently at is equal to the row to edit variable, which is the index of the row we're editing. If it's not equal to that, we'll just return the current row. But if it is equal to that, we'll return the new row value which we found. And this basically only edits um, the new row that's being edited while keeping everything else the same. Now, if we save this, um, everything should work as before, but if we try to edit something, it should modify the row which we're trying to edit. So we'll just go ahead and refresh. And if we try to add a new row, say page four, and write down the, just the description and set it to draft, we see that it still adds a new row. But if we try to edit an existing row and just make some changes, we see that it gets saved and the new value is present in the row which we just edited. Now, there is one issue that still exists in this. So let's say, for example, we try to edit an existing row clicking on pencil on. So it opens up as a shift, but if we click on the add button, it still has some default values, which we don't want. And this is because this row to edit variable isn't getting reset to null after we open up the model for editing. So all we need to do is whenever the model is closed, we need to say set row to edit and set it back to null again. So whenever this model gets closed, it gets set back to null and now it works as it properly should. So we click on the add button and it's empty as it should be. So that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, we learned how to make the table component. Um, we see that we have multiple columns. Um, and it's dynamically sized based on the width of the window. And it also adds a scrollable um, element based on the width. Um, and when you click on the trash icon, it deletes a particular row. Clicking on the edit icon lets you edit the values inside the row and save it. And the add button allows you to create um, a new row by editing the fields and clicking on submit. So that's about it for this tutorial. The link for the code will be in the description down below. If you like the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for tutorials I should work on, do leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.